If you want to learn how to make this shop UI that tweens in and out really nicely and it has a close button as well, then watch all the way through because in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I did this. If you want to purchase the file with the finished script, you can do so for just $2.50 on my website, link down in the description. But now, let's go ahead and make this frame. Okay, to help you guys get started, I want to actually give you this frame for free as a gift. All you're going to have to do is sign up for my email list, the link will be down in the description, and as soon as you do, you should get an email sent to your inbox with the file. Make sure to check your spam, and then you can download it from that email. Then just drag the downloaded file from your file explorer into your game and drop it, and it should appear right here in the workspace. Next, just drag that shop UI into starter GUI, and we're good to go. Okay, so let's script this frame. This shouldn't be too bad. The first thing you want to do is open up this UI. So inside of starter GUI and the shop UI, click that little triangle to open it up and open up the canvas and find the shop frame. Then scroll down in the properties, which if that's not open, make sure to go to view and make sure explorer and properties are both open. Click the shop frame, scroll way down to visible and uncheck visible to make it invisible. Perfect, now let's make the script. Go ahead and insert a local script into the canvas frame, and you can name the script Open Shop. Next, go ahead and delete the print hello world, and we're going to get started on the script. The first thing we need to do is have some variables. So first we can say local frame equals to script.parent colon wait for child shop frame, just like this. Now, keep in mind if you have a different frame that you're using, just replace this with a directory or the path to your frame. So this is just saying we're creating a brand new variable and that is equal to script.parent colon wait for child frame. So it's equal to this shop frame right here. So whenever we say frame in the script, it knows we're talking about the shop. Next, let's get the size that the frame should be. Make sure that your frame is sized correctly already. It can be invisible, just make sure that the size is correct. For us, this is perfect, so we don't need to fix it. Next, let's store that size inside of a variable by saying local size equals to frame.size. Go ahead and drop a line with enter and type local button. This will be your button that opens and closes the shop. Equals to script.parent colon wait for child shop button. As you can see, if we come over here, our shop button right here is called shop button, and that's why we're saying script.parent colon wait for child shop button. Next, we have a second button, and that is to close out the frame, and it's a little close button. So to, let's go ahead and grab that. We can say local button two equals to frame, because it's inside of the frame, colon wait for child close. Now, this is all the variables that we should need except for our debounce. So this gets all of the different frames and buttons we need. Next, so that they can't spam it, let's add a debounce. So say local debounce equals to false. Now, what we're gonna start by doing is saying button dot mouse button one down, colon connect function, and write it just like this with the same parentheses and capital letters and all that. It's super important that you do that. Now, what is this doing? It's basically saying whenever the player clicks the button, we wanna run some code. So first let's check if the debounce equals to true. If debounce, then return end. Again, this will just stop them from spamming the button. That way they can only click the shop a couple times every second. It just makes sure that the frame fully finishes tweening before we open and close it again. Next, we can say if not frame.visible, then we're going to call open frame, just like this, okay? Now we are gonna have an error because that's a function we have to write. And then we can say else close frame. All right, perfect. So we have these two functions right here. We're gonna write them in just a second, but first let's now say button two dot mouse button one down, colon connect function like this. And we can again say if debounce then return end and we can say close frame. Now you may be wondering why are we not checking to see if the frame is visible? Because up here we check to see if the frame is visible and if it's not, then we wanna open the frame. But if it is visible, we wanna close it. Now the reason we're not checking that here is because button two is a close button. So we only want to close the frame with this button. Now let's go ahead and write those functions. So we can say function open frame like this, and you can just say debounce equals to true. So this stops them from spamming the frame. Next we can say frame colon tween size. And this next thing that we want to do is set the finished size. So because this is the open frame, we can just say size. Remember, we have a variable called size, and that's the finished size that we want. Next, we can say enum.easingdirection.out, comma, enum.easingstyle.back, comma, 0 0.2. 
Now, make sure you have all these little commas and dots. That's super, super important. So just double check it all because this is going to be really important. This does the actual tweening. So remember how it smoothly came out and opened? That's what this line does. It's basically saying frame tween size. So we're going to smoothly change the size to be the finished size. Now, before that, after the debounce, let's change a couple things. So let's say frame dot size equals udem 2new dot new zero comma zero comma zero comma zero. This is basically saying, hey, we want our frame to start out already closed. So this resizes the frame so that it is completely small. It's just not even there. It's just completely small. It's at a size of zero. That's because we want it to start at zero and we want it to tween out. Next, we can say frame dot visible equals to true. So we want to make the frame visible. Now, after the tween, let's say task dot weight 0.25 and debounce equals to false. Now they can click the button again. All right, next we can just add the last function and that is our close frame function. So function close frame, open and close parentheses. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to say debounce equals to true. Again, this just stops them from spamming. Then we can say frame colon tween size parentheses udem2 dot new zero comma zero comma zero comma zero okay and then we can say enum dot easing direction dot in and I'll explain this in just a second comma enum dot easing style dot sign comma 0 0.2 now what does this do this basically tweens the frame so that it is at a frame size of zero so it basically makes the frame invisible because we're tweening it all the way in until its size is zero these are specific things you might have noticed enum.easing direction and easing style you can change these up these just tend to look nice uh, it's just the style of, of tweening that we want to do and this is the one i've chosen for the tutorial if you want to mess around with it you can try that but i would recommend keeping it as is next say task.wait 0.25 so the script will wait 0.25 seconds that'll wait for the tween to finish and we can just say frame.visible equals to false Frame, uh, and then we can say debounce, sorry, debounce equals to false. So this lets them open it again. All right, and that's it. So we can go ahead and close out of the local script and click play. And uh, if we go ahead and hover over the shop and click it, you can see it opens and closes. We can also click the X and there we go. There is our nicely tweening shop just like that. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in my Discord server. The link will be down in the description. Uh, but yeah, I hope this was helpful. Let me know what other tutorials you want me to do next. Leave them down in the description. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.